the top From the top floor Tips from the top All right From the top floor Mouse over presets and it will immediately show you in this little preview up here what if you click on that preset what will happen to your image and just a little a little note about presets presets aren't actually doing anything to your image presets are just changing these sliders over here to preset values so you could you could and I think of them as starting points so when I slide over here and I click on one of these guys it's just gonna preset my uh, my develop controls to whatever this is, and then I can go in and say, okay, yeah, that looks good, but it's too blue. So, so it's all still non-destructive. It's, it's still not completely gonna do anything to your original image. Absolutely. So, and the non-destructivity of it is, you know, you, whether you're shooting RAW or JPEG, uh, this happens to be a RAW image, but uh, the RAW data is inherently read-only anyway. So you're not going to make any changes to raw data. Unlike a JPEG, say you're in Photoshop and you're editing a JPEG image, you make some changes to it and you save it, it's going to compress that image every time you save it. Yep, you don't want to do that too often. You don't want to do it because it's throwing, <laughs> compression means it's throwing pixels away. It's throwing things away that it thinks that you don't need. Uh, eventually you'll end up with garbage. <laughs> so Well, and very fast actually, yeah. Yeah, yep. So with, with RAW, well, like we're doing here, each time I make a change to the image or apply a preset or change my ingredients that make up what the final image is going to be for this image, um, it's going back to that raw data and pulling the most pristine bits that it can to render me the best image that I could possibly get, which is brilliant. It's kind of like, you know, baking multiple cakes and being able to change <laughs> your ingredients while it's cooking, <laughs> yep. you know, so... Uh, that's really cool. So my first step is like like I was saying before, I was probably want to make this one black and white. And I have some other presets loaded in. Some of these are from Kevin Kubota, um, and some ship with Lightroom. So we'll stick to the ones that ship with Lightroom. So we'll say, you know, black and white low contrast is a good place to start. So I'll click on that, and boom, my image is now black and white low contrast. But you can see the sky is still kind. It's kind of blown out, and my pillars in the front are a little you know, a little dull. So what I probably want to do is go over to my slider and maybe open up my blacks a little bit like that. You know, maybe pull a fill light in here. And my cross at the top is missing, so I'm going to I'm going to work on that a little bit too. Um I can bring my overall exposure down on the image to make it a little bit more dramatic. And now what I would probably do is the sky is is really important in this image. So I'd probably go into the sky on this and use my localized adjustment tool. So this icon that I clicked right here um, is the gradient brush or the gradient uh, filter actually. So what this essentially is in the old days, Chris, remember when you had your film camera mm -hmm. and you used to screw these filters on the front or maybe you were you know, cool, and you had the Koken set that you could slide in graduated uh, filters. And the grad <laughs> to slide in to yeah. darken down the sky to bring the Dynamic range of the picture together yep. in certain areas. I got. Yep. St I'm still using those. Yeah. Well, now you can do that with just this tool. Yep. You know. And of course, it makes sense. Like if you're doing neutral density and you want that captured well, in the image itself. There is something to there. be said to do it on the scene, especially yep. if the if the uh, the range is too high for right. the camera to capture. Right. Um, but if you have everything within the range, mm -hmm. um, I. I yep. think using an ND grad filter there is uh, a digital ND grad filter is usually gonna cut it. Yep, it will. The difference here is with these grad filters are you can load them with different things other than just exposure, like an ND grad filter. So you can <laughs> <laughs> clarity. <laughs> you can have clarity, <laughs> contrast, <laughs> saturation, all that in that filter. You yep. know, so you have infinite combinations of these filters that you can apply selectively to parts of the image. And it's non-destructive, and that uh, makes it always super powerful. Which is really cool. And it's kind of hard to get your brain around it, you know, when you're new to Lightroom, the non-destructivity, especially if you're used to burning changes in. Yeah. Well, it's, it's basically a cookbook. It's basically yeah. a recipe. Do this, do this, do this, do this. Yep. And that's what you then save. So if you do a, like a virtual copy of a picture, mm -hmm. all you do is you copy the, the recipe for yep. that picture and that doesn't take up yep. any and space. And it's still virtually. pulling, pulling yep. the ingredients from the same bucket. So yep. it's just rendering a different look for right. our primitive human eyes to see, right. um, which is cool. And it, when it, it sort of hit home with me uh, a couple of years ago when I had to go back into an image that was edited in RAW and make some changes. And I, you, know, you click on that image and boom, there are all the changes that you made. You can render off another version of that or create another virtual copy of that and just keep going. Right. So 
amazing stuff. So on th onto this filter here. So I would click on this. So I drag the exposure down on this. So we'll say you know maybe two stops or so, just to see. And again, this is non-destructive, so I can I can make decisions before or after mm -hmm. I apply the effect. I I tend to do these things when I if I paint in some exposure compensation. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to do these with the uh, thing cranked up all the way so yeah. I see what I'm doing and I see a really exaggerated version of what I do mm -hmm. and then I just pull it back yeah yeah, yeah. because it doesn't matter right yeah. it doesn't matter because it's it's all the same and it just depends on how you work and how familiar you are with the tool yep. because it, you know at a certain point you're gonna say oh I know this image just probably needs me to take away you know or add two stops here or one stop there and you can start there but you don't have to like you work you could right. just put it all in and then back it off so here I just went uh, what minus 1.89 on the exposure, True. And, and because I uh, because we're non-destructive, I can drag that down later and add more uh, to just that top here. So that would probably be the first thing that I did to this image. The second thing I would do: uh, these pillars are kind of uh, a, a dominant area of the image, so I would probably go in and, and bring those out a little bit. And to do that, I would use this localized adjustment brush here. <laughs> So just click on the brush, and we have the same controls that we had for the gradient tool here, but now we have a brush that we can paint selectively. Now, Chris, one of the, my favorite things about this, and when, I, when they were building this and I, I saw it demoed, it was like, it's kind of like when technology and magic kind of mix, you know? It's like, is that really true that you could do that? Because the, guy, the guys that wrote this created this algorithm that is smart enough to detect the edges of where you're dragging and and constrain your selection to just in that area while it's applying the effect that you asked for. So so for for the techies out there it's creating a mask on the it go. Is. Yep, it's yeah. creating a mask on the fly and a very good mask that you can of course because we're not destructive change it later. Yeah. <laughs> so uh what I would do here is I'd zoom in a little bit on the image. So let's get out of this guy. Zoom in a little bit on the image here. And a quick note about um, um, about navigating the UI. I'm on a 15-inch MacBook Pro here. If I want to expose more of the image so I can see what I'm doing, another keyboard shortcut is... F. F to go full screen. Yep. Full screen. And then all of a sudden, I think you have two levels of full screen. Mm -hmm. One is... The, the second one is hiding everything on your screen, so you yep. have the full UI. Yep, and if you want to toggle back and forth between showing your palettes and not really quickly without going through that, you can just hit the tab key. Or shift tab to mm -hmm. get rid of everything. Yep. Oh, I love those yep. shortcuts. Yep. They See, really that's, that's the power. Yeah, you know, just being able to do that stuff really quickly, and once once you build those those neural <laughs> pathways, you, you just do it subconsciously. And it's and it's a very natural way to work, to have the one hand on the mouse or on a pen, if you mm -hmm. use a pen tablet, and have the other hand on the keyboard, so you doing the switching with the one hand and the painting and the uh, the editing with the other hand yeah. and um, you can really speed up the process enormously. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm gonna I'm gonna actually jump out of this image now because I want to show that a little more because I think the the localized uh, the con the the building the mask on the fly thing is mm -hmm. critical. So let's go back. I'm gonna hit the G key and I'm back into my grid mode here. So now I'm going to hop into this image. We're going to make some quick changes to this image. This was, a, this was shot on a photo walk in, I believe I was in Los Gatos, California, a couple, I think it was sometime last year we shot this thing. Just out playing around, walking to lunch, shot it. So I'm looking at the image, I'm going to hit D, bring, into the, bring it into the develop module. And first off, you can see that it's a little, I don't know if you can see it on the, on the stream, but it's a little washed out. So I'm going to bring the exposure down a little bit just to bring it into I'm going to season this to my taste. I remember that I told you there'd be sunshine after rain. 